Parts Express, the number one source for audio, video, and speaker building components. Next, let's move on to a ported enclosure with the same speaker. Ported enclosures are more useful for music because you're not going to have too many fundamental notes or source material that's going to play much below 40 hertz. Many people say that a ported enclosure sounds more musical and actually uses more of the available XMAX of the speaker in relation to the box. Let me edit that part. Using a vented box makes more efficient use of the speaker because you're actually using the box itself as an assist. So going back to our type of enclosure we change it to vented, hit suggest, and personally I choose extended bass, however you have high output for pro audio applications high fidelity for the flattest possible response and extended bass to hit the lowest possible notes. I choose extended bass. I find this to sound best with this particular driver. Now what we're seeing here is an enclosure internal volume of 11.66 cubic feet, which is pretty unusable in most modern homes. So change this to something that's going to be usable for you. Personally what I say is don't go below half of this. So we'll model six and a half cubic feet. Actually, you know what? Let's take that down to five and a half cubic feet. That's actually half. Hit your suggest FB because that's going to change with the volume. And that's going to be the suggested tuning frequency of the box. The damping has the same effect here. So we're really not going to worry about that so much with the vented box because we want to make the box to be as close to the model as possible the damping material will affect that. So we go back, we're looking at a tuning frequency of 21 and a half hertz. We go over to vent and this is going to be what determines your vent size. Now because of how much air we're displacing, the minimum vent size in terms of diameter is going to be quite large. In this case it's 8.3 inches. This is going to be much larger than anything that's available on the market. So instead of using one large port, we're going to use two smaller ports. I'm going to change this to about four inches in diameter. Notice also when we change the port diameter, we're also affecting the port length. Basically, the smaller the port diameter, the shorter the port length for a given volume to hit a particular tuning frequency. What you want to be careful of is using too small of a port. This will manifest itself as vent air velocity, otherwise known as port whistling or port noise. You can always change the type of flare or port. You can always change the type of port from one flush end, which is just going to be a tube, to no flush ends, which is going to be a port just sticking out of the box, which you're not going to use that, or two flared ends, such as our precision ports that we sell. But I'm going to go with one flush end. As you can find, 4-inch diameter PVC readily available at most hardware stores. So we're looking at a 4-inch diameter, 24 inches long by 2. So I'm going to change this to 24 so we get an accurate representation of what's going to happen. That's basically all that you have in terms of the box input. And again, we're using 1.5 inch material, so it's already derived my external dimensions. And I can always go back and change this and fit it to whatever I would like to see being used as a box in order to hit a particular internal volume. So I'm going to hit accept now. Then we go back over to our response window and hit plot. Now what we're seeing here is the actual difference between a sealed and ported enclosure. This particular ported enclosure gives us much more output from about 12 and a half hertz all the way up to about 100 hertz. The trade-off is going to be you could not put a signal into this box it's going to be below 24 hertz which is the tuning frequency. Also a lot of people think that ported enclosures sound flabby or loose and not as tight but I would contest that with saying that they've just never heard a properly designed ported enclosure. Ported enclosures of this type would sound very nice, very articulate, and very clean. Going back down to the customized or the custom amplitude response window we're still using the same 500 watts of input power, but as you can see, we're actually at 116 hertz to a much lower frequency. In this case, 
We've extended the 116 dB, not hertz, all the way down to 35 hertz. And your F3, your half power point, is actually going to be at 24 hertz. Looking at the cone displacement, what I'm seeing here is that the speaker is running out of X max below 15 hertz. So you would want to make sure that whatever amplifier you used had what's called a rumble filter. That's going to prevent low frequency information from getting out to the speaker. Again, you would probably want this low frequency information for home theater, but it's not nearly as necessary for music. We're going to look at the vent velocity here, and this is where if you use too small of a diameter port, you're going to get vent air velocity. I can show you what that would look like. Going back to the box selection window, and going to vent, I'm going to change this to something that I know to be way too small. And then I'm going to plot it. As you can see, the vent air velocity is off the chart. This is what you would want to avoid. So these are just some of the things to keep in mind when designing a subwoofer. And again, we recommend using Harris Tech's Basebox 6 Pro software, available from PartsExpress.com under SKU number 500-923. Over 15,000 products, free same-day shipping on most orders, 45-day no-hassle returns, and free tech support. PartsExpress.com, the number one source for audio, video, and speaker building components.